Hey everyone, welcome back to our weekly tech tip. Uh, the first thing to get out of the way is, if you didn't check out our last week's tech tip, I would definitely recommend going back and checking it out. We did a really good interview with Austin Evans last week and we touched it, touched base with him about his current storage infrastructure. If you guys don't know, he's actually running both a Stornado and a Stornator in his internal uh, network. So very, very cool. He edits off his Stornado and he has long-term storage on his Stornator. Definitely check that out if you get some time. So that being said, this week we're actually going to go back into the world of Petasan. And if you noticed the second video I did about it, I did tease a little bit of uh, benchmarking and some performance numbers, but never actually ended up getting that far. So with this video, we're going to dive back into Petasan. I'm going to bring you over to my desk and we'll do some benchmarks, uh, first and foremost through a vSphere cluster. Then I'm going to show you maybe some of the different performance numbers that you may see depending on if you're using Windows or a Linux environment and what that comes down to and why that happens. Uh, typically, just a you know spoiler alert, it, it's going to be down to the file system that's used and also the way that uh, the file system or the operating system handles caching. So it'll be really cool to show those numbers side by side and, and show you why they differ. So we're going to do that and also I might do a little bit of tuning as far as getting extra performance out of your Petasan cluster. Now this is all going to be done with our base cluster. So this is our starter cluster. It's a three node cluster with AV15 with fairly low specs. And you're, you'll be very surprised at the performance we can pull out of this thing when using it as the backing storage for a vSphere cluster. So let's head over to my desk and jump in. All right, guys, so welcome to the Petasan demo here where we're going to show off some benchmarks. But first, let's talk about the cluster itself. So as I mentioned in the intro of the video, this is based on our base cluster. So this is the lowest end cluster that we develop and we build at 45 drives. And so let's take a look at what that means. So this is a three node cluster, which is what our base cluster is made up of. And it also does not include any gateways either, which some of our uh, normal or larger clusters will come with for file access if you're using file system via like Samba or NFS, um, but this cluster is all going to be contained to the three nodes uh, in the actual cluster. So let's take a look at the specs of it. So first let's take a look at the memory. So for our base cluster, um, you will actually be bound to 64 gigs of RAM at the absolute maximum. So that's the most that this board can hold. And then also if we take a look at our CPU, we'll see that we are running a Xeon 1220 V6. So that is a four core, four thread CPU. So these base clusters we typically sell for people that have hot, the need for high availability file serving typically, uh, or high availability for a uh, virtualized environment that doesn't have high performance requirements. Uh, maybe a file server for a business that you can't have it ever go down, but you're not using it for you know high performance computer or anything like that. It's just a regular file server for opening Word files and images and possibly even videos. So. With that being said, that's the cluster we are going to be doing some benchmarks on today. Um, now, this is a little bit extra from a typical base cluster because this also has some SSD caching as well. So we are using an SSD first and foremost for our write cache in this cluster. And then also we are using uh, one SSD as well for the DB in the wall of the OSD. So with that being said, let's get started. Um, so another cool thing that we're going to show here is we're going to do some benchmarks. We're going to do one in Windows, and we are going to do one in Windows, and we're going to compare the difference between what you end up seeing as results. Now, one of the big differences, obviously, is going to be it's not the exact same benchmark. We're running from one to the other, so that's going to have some variance in it. But we are using one meg block size for the testing, and we are also uh, using a sequential test for both. Um, at least, well, the Windows does have some random as well, but we're only going to be looking at the sequential here. Um, and then we'll take a look and we'll try to ana uh, do an analysis of this and see what is exactly causing the differences between the two. And then also you can get a good overview or understanding of exactly how uh, this cluster can perform when it has just a little bit of caching in there for its uh, for higher performance. So let's get started and let's run a quick crystal disk here on our Windows machine. So, oh, I should also mention that all of the VMs, all the machines, 
machines that are running for this testing are on our three node vSphere cluster. So if we hop on over here, we'll take a look. So each uh, storage backend, storage device that we're using here are a Petasan iSCSI disk that is built in this cluster here. So if we take a look over on our iSCSI disks, we will see a number of disks that we are using for vSphere. Uh, you may have seen this if you watched uh, the, one of the last videos on Petasan that I did. And then we'll take a look here that these three nodes, and they all have the same Petasan disks mounted. Uh, one is a little different. We used one mag object size, but we won't be worrying about that today. We are using a standard Petasan iSCSI disk with a four mag object size. Okay, so let us jump into some testing first. So first we'll do a Windows benchmark, and actually I will also show what the actual cluster is seeing as far as throughput as well when we do these, because you'll notice it's not exactly what we see on the VM, and that's going to be due to some caching that happens on the file system layer and the operating system layer itself. So VMware itself has no caching for any of the writes. Obviously that wouldn't make much sense uh, for a hypervisor to do any type of write caching because that could uh, cause corruption in the event that one of the, uh, the hypervisor nodes failed. So there is no caching that happens there. All right, so let's take a look. We're gonna put our throughput up and we're gonna do just an RPD pool and we're gonna have this up. All right, so let's start with what we've got here is we're going to do a one gig size, but we're going to run it. Um, typically, it's going to run for five times. And actually, we have four threads set up. So let's start with one thread. And we'll see just how much extra performance we can get with Ceph by adding multi-threading into the mix, which really is what makes Ceph shine really well. So first, let's start with one thread for each benchmark. And while it is going to benchmark the randoms as well, we're just going to focus on our sequentials. All right, so here we go. All right, so there we go. So now we can take a look at these results, and also we can see on the back end, on the Ceph side, we actually did observe a very, very close to realistic view here of the actual performance and reads that we saw out of this benchmark. So we saw 773 megabytes a second read and we saw just about the exact same thing coming through on the cluster itself now what we can see on the right side is quite a bit differently we actually only ended up seeing in the realm of 156 megabytes a second throughput needed on the cluster now the big reason for that is uh, without actually going in and really doing some in-depth testing um, is ntfs uses a policy for its uh, read caching called least recently used. A lot of file systems will use this. And so if I had to guess, I would say this is exactly what's going on here. It just did these writes, and those writes are still living, a large part of them, inside of RAM, which can be accessed very quickly for a quick write uh, through this, this operating system, through this node, which it does have 8 gigs of RAM available to it. So the cluster was not needed to pull all of that data from, which is pretty cool to see. So let's take a quick run and we'll do this with four threads and see just how much throughput we can get out of a single machine uh, when you are accessing it via not only just via iSCSI but through vSphere which also has its own file system uh, VF, VMFS on there and then a block device carved out of that on this VM so let's try to see exactly how much we can get as far as throughput out of this one VM with only I think we only have two cores and eight gigs of, of memory on this thing all right, so let's jack the threads up. Let's just go to four. Um, we don't have to go anything crazier than that because I think we should see a really nice increase even with the added threads. And Ceph, again, really is great uh, at multi-threaded workloads. All right, so let's run this again and, and see what we get. And there we go. So now we're taking a look at this, and it's actually pretty crazy if you think about it. This being one machine that is running off of a vSphere cluster through a three node uh, starter cluster, we see some fantastic writes, or sorry, reads, and also we can see the cluster itself also hit that same amount, which is pretty cool to see. So it's not just caching that we're taking advantage of, but the cluster is actually able to perform that duty. And then we can see our writes have increased as well. Now they have increased, have not increased quite as much as the reads have, uh, but that's normal. Um, and then if we take a look actually on the cluster side, we can see that it jumped up 
as well. Now, it had to go to the cluster for more of those writes because it wasn't able to cache as much in RAM this time. So we do see a bigger spike uh, in the writes, which is pretty cool to see. So that is our benchmark for our Windows machine. And now let's jump over and take a look at a CentOS machine and see just how the behavior is different between uh, NTFS with Windows and XFS with CentOS. Now these are all running on the same cluster, the same data store, so you would think the performance would, you know, end up being very, very close, but that actually ends up being quite different, and there are some tunings and things you can do differently uh, with your XFS file system. For example, example delayed allocation is, is on, and uh, unless your application that is writing to your XFS file system is aware, it will take advantage of that, so you will see some, some higher write performance than normal, and it... Uh, that could uh, be a factor for you. So let's just start this test. And we're going to run a 16 gig test in this instance because the Windows uh, one, while it's only writing one gig, it is writing that multiple times over and over. So we want to get at least uh, get this thing working and, and getting out of its cache a little bit so we can see uh, something on the actual cluster side. So we'll do a, a one meg object, or so, sorry, one meg record size, similar or identical to Windows. And we're going to do one thread first. We're going to do reads. And then we're going to do, or sorry, we're going to do writes, and then we're going to do reads, and we've got our 16 gig here. So let's run this test and see what we get. All right, so our test is now finished, and we're just starting to get our uh, graph coming in here. But if we take a look, we can see the difference is quite stark in compared to what Windows was the Windows testing look like. So we can see our writes are actually quite a bit higher than our reads in this instance. We're getting 700 megabytes on our writes and we're getting about 350 345 on our reads now the reason for this is again without going very deep into this and that actually might be something interesting if someone if you guys are interested in seeing a deep dive in the different ways that different file system systems handle caching and reads and writes let us know because we could definitely dig into this uh, much much deeper and and really kind of dig into exactly why uh, the performance differences come out so different but my hypothesis here just knowing what I know about the two different file systems is is uh, that I know delayed allocation is on by default with XFS and I do know that IOZone is not aware of it so what I believe is happening here with our rights and I think the rights on the actual uh, cluster here backing that up is that many of these rights are being allocated or sorry being acknowledged before they actually are fully committed into the cluster and pulling back a false uh, an actual false result so the the rights are being acknowledged while they're still in RAM and still being flushed back to the cluster itself which could be dangerous and that's why delayed allocation should be you know uh, something you're aware of and something you turn off um, if you have to unless the application is aware of that it's writing to XFS and then we see here our reads which end up in the 345 350 megabytes range and if we take a look at our cluster we got around the same idea a same number here and I think what that uh, shows is that XFS does not use the same cache caching policy that a Windows NTFS file system does. Now, uh, since XFS is a journaling file system, it does have the ability to do specific add-on caching. It does have... Uh, or you could also use LVM, an LVM layer, to handle a write caching, which is actually what we're doing in our cluster here. Um, but uh, yeah, I think that's something we could explore in some further videos. I just really wanted to show the different ways that different file systems, even though they're running on the same exact backing storage, can give vastly different results. And that's why a lot of the times I think benchmarks um, really mean a whole lot less than people think they mean. And, and I know it is best practice a lot of times to do benchmarks with caching off completely, but then it kind of gives you a false uh, view of exactly how your performance is. Now, don't get me wrong, it is great when you are trying to find your bottlenecks and find exactly how your storage is going to work underneath to, to turn off uh, caching when you are doing benchmarks, but I think to get a real world uh, observation of how your performance is going to be in your use case, it is always great to uh, to do both. To definitely do some benchmarking with the caching enabled because that's what you're going to see in real life. These mechanisms are in place, they do work, so it is something that you can factor in to your performance of your cluster. So with that being said, uh, I think we will end it off here, and I'm really glad you guys tuned in to watch this, and again, if you have any questions or
comments on an idea for a future video if you really want to see us go in depth on the different ways of different file system to caching or the performance uh, of different file systems definitely let us know because uh, that's something we love to do especially with ZFS we've done a lot of work with that as well so let us know and uh, thanks for watching all right, so hopefully you enjoyed this last video in our Petasan series. Uh, but if there's anything else you want to see, possibly maybe the way Petasan does file system or anything else for that matter, let us know in the comments section down below. We'll definitely get to that in a future video. So thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you on the next one.